Hey, Raylene, how you doing? I'm doing good, Elisa. How about yourself? Good. So I understand you are going to teach us about oracle cards. First of all, what are those? I hate to sound stupid, but dumb it down for me anyway. Okay. So oracle cards are really a a tool and a portal to use to the other side. There's many different types of oracle cards. There's tarot, there's your basic oracle. It's all a form of um, cards, oracle. There's different messages in each deck that you get. Like tarot is very specific. For tarot, tarot tends to have like the death card in it. So here's a deck of tarot. Ooh. And a lot of people don't like those type of messages. And so it depends on who you choose to go with, whether it's like an uplifting deck. Uh, tarot can tell you exactly as it is. And like this goddess guidance deck, it'll give you more of like a, a positive message. Mm -hmm. Even if things are, you know, a little bit rough right now, it'll give you more positive. Well, so you, you, can't, you can't stick your head in the sand. You, if you want to know the truth, you want to know the truth, right? Exactly, exactly. But the cards will tell you the truth to a certain extent, like a tarot can give you more of a harsh reality versus a softer reality. So it is still kind of what you make of it, you know, what you take yeah. of the messages that are presented to you. I guess it's what you're emotional, emotionally ready to receive too. So yeah, yeah. I say, get it on, you know, load it on me, man. Tell me the, tell me the big bad truth. Well, okay, let's go on next and say, well, of course, you might want to explain what's on your neck. It's a crystal, right? Yes, and I've got a, a crystal taped here. It's medical tape. I'm doing some balancing today, so don't be alarmed. It's nothing medical. I'm just uh, doing some chakra balancing. Yeah, she's the crystal <laughs> goddess, man. It kind of reminds me of what is that? Was it on? Is it on The Simpsons or whatever, where the lady has uh, had throat cancer, and she smokes through her her the little hole in her neck? <laughs> it's like the old lady. Erica's yeah, lady. That's he funny. said, hi, mom. Hi, baby. I love you so much. He says, I love you, too. And he's laughing at you because he says, of course, you would remember that part of The Simpsons. <laughs> I know. I was, what are you doing, man? All right. So, um, Raylene, why don't you tell us about yourself, too? Okay. And so, for me, my name is Raylene. I am a medium. I am clairvoyant, claircognizance, and clairsentience. I, I uh, communicate with spirit guides. It's kind of hard to explain, but I have more of a knowing um, what they're telling me. It's not like I'm hearing it with my direct outside ear. It comes in from the inside. It's a knowing or almost like um, self-talk. Like, so it'll be like I'm talking to myself, but I can definitely distinguish what voice is who. Mm. Um, and when it comes to the clairvoyance, it's kind of like picture books that I receive. Um, in my mind, it's not that I'm seeing with my actual outside eyes. It's all going on inside my mind. So imagine the room that you're sitting in right now and mm -hmm. me having that played out in my head, like a picture. And so I can see where the spirits are standing there. Okay. Um, also, clairsentience. So I've got the sensation of where the spirit is. I'm feeling them. Um, and it's not that tangible, hard, like body sensation. It's yeah. more oh, like... Yeah eerie sensation you know like you can sense somebody behind you to the right or to the left but you can't see them mm. um, and so that's the clairsentience that I work with and when I work with my cards actually the energy moves through my hand it's all energetic based because I connect with either spirit guides or lost loved ones through the cards because that's who connects through them um, and so oh, the energy I can feel the energy move through my hands okay so is that how like a Ouija board works uh, like like the spirits or guys or whatever push energy through your hand to huh yes your body is a conduct oh it's a, okay it's a conduit okay um can you see Eric yes what and is he what's he look does he is his hair messy he has a hat on he says his hair is always messy of course it's I know bro like he does have a hat on he has it to the side a little bit tilted mm -hmm. He is wearing just regular blue jeans with a white t-shirt, nothing too fancy. He doesn't have on any shoes. Um, he's got toenails that need to be cut. Eric! <laughs> That's awful. Well, it's better than, than uh, what your little, what your uh, big sister used to do when she was little. She would just like 
take her toenails and bite them off. And then when she'd want her though, she'd go to her siblings and say, can I bite your toenails off? Gross. Ugh. Um, but yeah, that's pretty nasty. nasty. That I would let her. <laughs> I remember I used to um, use uh, one of those little things to cut their hair, you know, the electric like wall clippers. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I was doing. So, and Eric's hair was so messy and Lucas's. So I would just, you know, just take the shortest thing, just buzz it off, you know, instead of doing the elaborate, okay, let's use the number five here and all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> Lucas looked at me and when he was just like five or six, well, mom, I guess there's no directions for bald. Done. I didn't have to have directions <laughs> for bald, man. I just, they call it the bizzer. And even... The year Eric died, when he got his last haircut, he asked, um, uh, what was her name? Anyway, the haircutter, if she was going to use a bizzer. She goes, what? <laughs> anyway, let's go on with the performance. He Show loves us. Me. Sorry, We're, guys. I got distracted. Thank you for sharing that story, Mom. Sure, anytime. It brings back positive memories that I like yeah. to go down. Good. Wow. So going back with the cards, your body, you use your body as energy. So that way the spirits can work through you and you connect with them. You know, it's very important to maintain, sorry, he's telling me to move my computer closer. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. It's very important to connect with protection and to focus while you're using the cards oh. um, and have a question or an intent as you're using the cards. Cause if you don't intend, then you're going to get mixed messages. So it's important to focus a question in before asking and connect to the person's spirit guides or angels that you're trying to connect to, to get the messages. Um, and so I'll demonstrate for you. That's like in the e -board. Real quickly, just sorry, in the e-board, we had to say an intent like, uh, you know, source, blah, 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 please surround me with a golden bubble of light of protection. I can't remember the whole thing, but, and, and give me the answers that are honor my greater good and you have to thank them and all that. So anyway, it's kind of a long message, but you can actually substitute it with a word. So like pineapple, done. Boom. The protection intent is, is sealed. All right, go ahead. And, and that's a really easy way to do it. And I, I talk to a lot of people about that too, because a lot of people don't like to do that whole long, you know, intention. Um, but very quickly with the e-board, you want to make sure that you've got two people using the e-board. Don't do it by oh, yourself. Yeah, no. You need the negative and the positive. So Oracle cards is something that you can do individually. You don't need the other person to ground you. Okay. Oh, neat. Um, he's got Jillian with him. She's mm. at a very distance. Um, yeah, because they broke up, I hear. She, he, he's got a new girlfriend. But they're still friends. He says it's not necessarily a new girlfriend. She's more distant because she's busy with a human life right now. Oh, okay. Um, he says so they're, they're still together, just at a distance now. Okay, okay. That's the way it lives. Got it. She says hello to you. Hi, Jillian. She's excited to be here as well. She says That's she's good. getting used to learning how to be fully here and also be in another body. She is? Oh, when you talk about she's involved with the human, she has incarnated? Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, okay. All right. So I thought I, would, I was going to combine a little bit of astrology with this. Um, just to give you a little bit more information okay. regarding the cards. You know, you don't always have to combine the astrology, but I wanted to pull the cards first, show you guys how they work, and then I pulled some transits for you, and I took a look at your birth chart and what you're currently going through right now. So let's what's, see. If we what, can get... What's transits? Sorry. Transits are, um, so like right now, we're going through Mercury retrograde. It's a transit. Okay. Tell it's, me about it. It's a it's a cycle of something that you go through. We have caught, we have transits all the time. Um, okay. So that's, that's okay. Because every appliance right. in my house has broken since Mercury turned retrograde. Oh. Okay, go ahead. That's going to be some fascinating news because I've got a lot of information that I pulled out of your chart regarding what's going to be experienced for you right now. Okay. All right, so let's do the cards and then I'll um, translate the information to you. So I'm gonna okay. go ahead and connect. Here we 
All right. Let me know if you guys can kind of see. Can you see that? You can see the cards, yeah. Okay. So there's my first one. So you just get a sense, you feel it's the right card to pick? It's uh, either going to come up a little bit for me. I can feel the energy that moves through my hands. So I can feel prior to it coming up oh. or the card will literally just fall out. Um, some people wait to feel like to pull the top three. It's everybody pulls differently. Some people move the cards and kind of pick out of the middle of the deck. And so you see how that one popped up. There's yeah, a one yeah. that's very uh -huh. big noticeably. Oh. So now I'm going to do, what I'm doing is a four card spread. That's that one. All right, so I'm also going to combine one more deck with these. And my intention when I pulled this was to give you guidance. I didn't have a specific question. And so whenever someone doesn't have a specific question, you just ask for guidance from the other person's spirit guides. But when you do this for a client, for example, can you, um, you, you can help with a specific question? Uh-oh. Can you hear me? I can, you're frozen. Oh, 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 good, good, good. You were frozen too, but we're good, we're good. Do you have a specific question you would like to ask this deck? No. Oh well. Uh, so this is a this yeah, is no. the second deck I'm going to combine with the first deck. Okay. No specific questions. Oh, um, are we going to move um, okay. anytime soon? So for that question, I would want to use this deck, Life Changes. Oh, okay. And. So you see how it's a filter. There's different decks with different messages. Ah. If the answer is not in the deck that you're using, then you have to use a different deck to filter the message. Oh my gosh, okay, that's so now complicated. It, it can be, but it's very, it could be very accurate as well. Okay. okay so guides and angels for Elisa, will there be a move for her in her near future? Like it was in the, a year. Wow, that just popped right out. Mm -hmm. You see how they move? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The energy just really moves through my hands. Uh-huh. And you can notice when it's the one that's coming and when they're just getting scattered. Ah. That one. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like a car that goes, ta-da, here I am. Pick exactly. me. Okay. All right, so to answer your question on the moving, you've got to know. Okay. I'm going to translate these cards to you. Let me pick up. So the very first one, and it's in the very first position, which represents the past. So this says, expect a miracle. So this tells me, the bottom of the card says, have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered. So there was the situation that you were going through where there was a hard time where you needed to, yes. you know, someone needed to tell you to, it's going to be okay. So yeah. there was a situation that was all right. Yeah, so this, that, was, that was absolutely, the was second, yesterday, but go ahead. Ah, uh, see. Now the second one is blossoming. It says, you are just getting started, so have patience with yourself and the process and do not give up. And what this is actually talking about is your abilities, some intuitive as well. So this is also talking about your abilities and with work, what you're doing work-wise. Um, now the third one, right here and this is an outcome not the final outcome but this is undying love it says the love you have shared is eternal regardless of the situation and so this tells me that there's some type of romance issue going on not necessarily an issue but work and home isn't balanced quite quite okay. yet um this fourth card right here is purification it says it's time for a cleansing de detoxification of your body and mind so what this tells me is that one, you're not grounded. Two, you need to detox yourself. Inside. I'm not gonna do a colonic, okay? I'm just telling you, okay? <laughs> no. 
But go ahead. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I draw the line. Diet, dietary change. That could be the detoxing side, eating okay. more grounding foods. Um, and not only that, but detoxing like relationships around you, people that irritate you. Yes, that's why we want to move. That's why we want to move. We want to, you know, get away from toxic people. Exactly. You know, that we love, but they're still toxic. They are. Uh, uh, Eric says, he says you have a really good heart, mom. He says you're doing good at filtering your emotions. And he says, you're also doing good at expressing your emotions these days. Okay. He's uh, telling you to stand up for what you believe is right. Well, so back to my abilities. Are you saying I should try to um, learn how to channel better or something, Eric? Well, he says, mom, there is no channeling better or channeling uh, worse. He or says, just, you yeah. grow, yeah. you learn different techniques. He oh. says, so to be patient with yourself and to learn different techniques, he goes, you already do channel. He says, you got to stop questioning it. Yeah. You try and find logic. And if it's not logic, you try and find a, a way of explaining it. Uh, he says, you believe like when you're feeling him concrete right there, but when it's you talking to yourself, that's when it's kind of like just going over your head. Yeah. Well, maybe there's a core, I could take a course or something, right? That, that That's certainly possible. He says, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, He's also talking about you working with crystals to help you with opening up your abilities. Oh. So it's more of your root chakra, not the other chakras that are out of balance. Your third eye is good. It's because you're having trouble. It's going to be like you're grounding. So when your root chakra is not doing good, you're going to find like yourself being inconsistent, being overwhelmed, irritable, forgetful, spacey. Um, wait, 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 were, were you saying something? No, I'm kidding. He goes, that's it, mom. There we go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So things like that. So work on that root chakra versus the other abilities, because whenever you're not grounded, your abilities aren't going to come in, you know, crystal clear or as clear as you want them to be. So for the people out there that have trouble being grounded um, and, you know, they need help with their root chakra, what crystal would be the best uh at least one of the best black have. tourmaline is really oh, yeah, good yeah. for your root and for grounding honestly if the crystal is brown if it's brown or black it's going to ground you very quickly okay now you guys remember because when you become ungrounded it takes time to become ungrounded it's not yeah. something that happens you know in just a matter of a day so it could take two to three days to get you grounded, you know, really good again, or it could take you a week of you working with that crystal before you're starting to feel completely grounded. So, so I could do what you did. I could tape uh, the, the tourmaline onto my root, over my root chakra. Absolutely. Okay. You sure can. Okay. And it would work wonders. All right. You can sleep with it under your pillow. There's many ways of doing it. Got it. Um, Okay, so going on to this other topic of the moving. So I intended as if there was gonna be a move within a year and the cards that I got was healing from the past, which represents the past situation. And you were, you've went through some healing. The second one is your present situation, which is finances. Mm -hmm. And so finances is what's gonna keep you from this movement. Okay. The third one is going to be motivation, the lack of motivation and getting things you know where they need to be right now oh that's, that's the awesome. truth i mean we've lived in the same house for 20 almost 26 years and to move all the crap out of it i just uh well, i'm just tossing 90 percent of it but we have another my a, adult uh daughter and her husband and two kids are living here too so they got all their stuff so, so that leads they're right moving to they're moving the Yep, so that's that leads right into this card. This is the outcome, which is relationship dynamics. So what's going on right now, there's a lot of relationship dynamics going on in the home, mm. space-wise, you know, people-wise. Mm -hmm. So not in a year from now, you're not going to have the movement. Okay. You're a smart ass, Eric. <laughs> he says, uh -oh. well, she can, she can if things get put into place and they really put their focus into it instead yeah. of putting the idea there and not putting it into play. Right. Um, but he also talks about, you know, consider the financial aspect of this right now, because right now is not the time to 
to consider that move with the finances. Okay. Um, okay, so that was two different filters, two different questions. Now wow, I want that's to awesome. give you an example of life purpose. So there's many different decks as I was explaining. Oh, I think I've recognized that deck. Yeah, I absolutely I, love wait, it. I think they have, do they have an app for the phone? Um, um, Life this, Purpose? I think? She does. She has an app, uh, Doreen Virtue. Oh, I'm not yeah. sure she has yeah. the Life Purpose one. But um, all of the cards that I have used right now, these are all by Doreen Virtue. Okay. Let me see if I have that. But go ahead. Keep on talking. Clearing the energy. The reason I clear the energy is because you want to clear the energy whenever you go from one person to another. Okay. You want the last person to use with the cards. Okay, yeah. And so now my intention is going to be, can you please tell me Elisa's life purpose? Yeah, I have life purpose. Oh, that, awesome. That's something different. This is uh, the peaceful warrior one, though. But I, I think I have the other one, too. But never mind. Who cares? I like the peaceful warrior. Mm-hmm. All right. Can you show us the face of the cards uh, mm -hmm. from time to time? Yes, I will. So the very first one that we pulled here. Sorry, let me turn them all. This is options. It says consider the career possibilities that are open to you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is going to your past. So you went through, you know, a career change, some type of career career change. Um, the second one is your present. So right now it says you understand animals and communicate with them intuitively. Trust your inner guidance as the animals are part of your life's work. And this one is in your present situation. So he's actually saying that you've got the ability to, to like telepathically connect with your animals. You can know if they're needing something without them having to come to you. Um, and you know, if they're disliking a situation. I do. That's true. But you know, it's interesting. You should, interesting. You should say that because I've been thinking that, uh, it would, it would be fun to like volunteer for the SPCA or volunteer at a hospital where I can hold little babies that are preemie and love on them. Or I was even considering going part-time back into medicine as an option. This is amazing, Elisa. I would have to tell you because it's coming up as animals, this would be volunteer work at like mm -hmm. what you were just explaining or humane society. And you would be able to communicate with the animals to kind of help to place them in a better environment um, yeah. or you know, move okay. them forward. Yeah. So that's what that one's talking about. You know how you were talking about, you've been thinking about it, but that's your channeling when you're oh. thinking that's your the way that you're receiving the information it's going to come in like very spontaneously very quickly and that's going to be either you thinking you're just thinking of it or you've got this amazing idea but it's not it's coming in as guidance channeling okay that's what he was talking about with you're unaware of it okay um so the third card i pulled is your innate ability to build and create brings you a deep sense of accomplishment it's builder so you have the ability to pretty much create what you want, build things, build foundations, creating something on your own and being more of like a self-employment, mm -hmm. not needing to listen to others. Well, I've always really been interested in doing woodworking because it'd be so much fun to make a beautiful piece of furniture. Uh, but that's been vetoed by my husband because he knows how clumsy I am and he knows I would be missing fingers. Anytime anybody comes into the kitchen, if I have a knife on my hand, the kids, whoever, no, get away from the knife, because I always cut myself. So he says she I'm is clumsy. not meant for sharp objects. Objects. <laughs> or climbing up ladders. If I climb a ladder, get down from there, mom. He says the children are like the mother. They're freaking out because their mom's going to get hurt. He I says reversed around. <laughs> and, and, and it's probably because I am not grounded. So I'm not in full control of my body exactly you're clumsy and oh, it is god yes oh. i have a dent in my utility room that's just the shape of this part of my head 
from when I fell off the, I was trying to reach something, got on top of the dryer and fell oh, backwards no. and hit it. Yeah. That was a big one. Yes. Was, it's no funny. Problem. No, it's hilarious. Uh, okay, <laughs> go ahead. I digress. Sorry, people. I just don't know why I'm so, I'm just going in all directions. He's laughing at you. He's talking about the way that he sees you or us as humans now. It's almost like live television for him. So he doesn't have the need to create TV because as he watches us, you know, thinking that would be not funny, you know, having somebody get hurt. He says, sometimes we can see that they're not really hurt and see the funniness in it. Yeah. So it's, it's live TV for us. Mm -hmm. That's cool, Eric. I wish I can see like that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Bye. No. Okay, so the fourth card is travel. This is your life purpose involves traveling. And this is right now. So in the very beginning, you know, the way we look at the cards is the first one came as options. The second one came as animals. The third one came as builder. This travel is more of like right now, things that are going to be going on or things that are going to be happening in the close near future. Mm -hmm. This first three, past and present. So things that are happening right now. So traveling, there's going to be, this tells me that there's going to be an, either an unexpected trip that's going to come up last moment, okay. or there's, there's going to be, you know, something very unexpected. Well, it'd be my, my uh, father-in-law dying. He's 96. So it'd be, yes. Oh, let's see. He's in Norway. So, uh, and we do travel, we like to go camping. So we make little short trips to like the Texas hill country and, and stuff. So, um, mm. there's that. I, I've always loved to travel, but uh, there's just not enough time. And uh, yeah, okay. Right, there's not enough time to do it, but no. you'd be doing so much more. Yeah. He says that the traveling is actually gonna pick up for you quite a bit. Um, he's talking about you doing, going to different states with him. Oh, okay. So the last card- Oh, I see. Wait, let me tell you, uh, ask about the, uh, the travel thing. Christine and I, uh, went to my eldest daughter went to Ireland for a mother-daughter trip it was so much fun and she vlogged the whole thing and she has a whole series day one day two you guys ought to check it out on Christina Brawley b-r-l-y no b-r-a-l-y there's no w in there Christina with a k brawley.com anyway um, a lot of people thought we were so hilarious together that whole mother-daughter dynamic that they thought it should be on the travel channel like you know girls trip mom and, <laughs> and mom and daughter travel the world and we can like do do crazy stuff so he says mom let's put this into action because that's what it has to do with he says but as mom and daughter travel the world they're taking along their brother and their son <laughs> oh okay we can do that okay you're gonna be sharing my story in different countries um, which leads into this card speaker the very last card it says your life purpose involves your skills of orient orientation and you do you speak all the time you put so much education out there but mainly what this traveling is going to be falling into is speaking and teaching people um, the books come with these cards come with a little book the book is very easy to read it, they come with instructions on how to do different card readings and each, oh. each each card has a page that it goes into more detail about so you can get deeper explanations of the cards but with me i've been working with them and it's like a portal it opens up to the other side a connection and that's when the intuition comes in about what the card is pertaining to mm. So the more you use it, it's, it's very much like a tool, a portal to the other side that helps you when it comes to your intuition connecting. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of us are naturally intuitive mediums and we're just unaware of it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot like what you were doing, you know, the information was coming to you intuitively of what to do. You just weren't sure of what steps to take next or, or when to do it. True. Um, he says not to procrastinate, mom. <laughs> okay, what do you want me to do next? Eric, what is, what is the priority here? <laughs> he goes, me. Oh, Eric. of course. <laughs> Do you think I should go back into medicine at least part-time? He says not uh, the medicine part, but you're going to be doing energy. So 
so it's going to be okay. a form of medication. It's just going to be energetic. All right. He's you know, I really would love for you, Raylene, so that I can put this down, g give us the links to each of these types of decks of cards. So, uh, you know, and, and of course, we'll uh, give everybody your information too. Yes, I'll get the links for you. Um, you can order them off of Amazon. So what I'll do is I'll just copy and send them to you directly. Okay. Um, but for the second part of this, I wanted to combine a little bit of astrology. Now, I'm still, astrology is such a big subject and it's such a big topic. And as we go through different transits, it's a different subject that you have to learn about. So it's constantly changing. It's never staying the same. Okay. So um, as I pulled up your chart, I did take some notes. I'm going to be reading off of um, notes I took out of my program. And your if the chart were a book, it would be a, in the horror genre probably, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh boy. There goes mom. <laughs> I know. Well, it's true. <laughs> a little bit true. He's laughing at you. You guys make a good team. Yeah. So right now we are having Mercury retrograde in Aries and we're also having a Jupiter retrograde in Scorpio. What this means is it's a very sensitive time. It's a time of healing and it's a time for romance, relationships. This can either be a make it or a break it type of time for relationships. Okay. Um, and so, for instance, say if you were in a relationship, the relationship was cut off two months ago, but that person is coming back into your life now. I would say that this is a time of <gasps> healing and coming back together. Is that, is that only, it could it be other kinds of relationships besides romantic ones? Yes, it can be romantic oh, wow. siblings, which is what I'm going to get into because this is happening in... This is all happening in your third house, in your sixth house, and in your 10th house. So the first one, the third house is like it rules communication, talking, thinking, gadgets, electricity, computers, cell phones, pagers, instant messenger, Facebook, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, siblings, traveling, libraries, schools, teachers, um, and communi community affairs. That's what the third house is all about. Yeah. You've had a full moon in your third house. I'm going to read this off to you and you tell me what stands out to you. Okay. The last two weeks have found you somewhat restless and in need of more from life than the mundane. Now the mundane is catching up with you. Errands need to be run. People are uh -oh. Oh, wait, you froze Talking a little bit. your ear off. You need to do some paperwork and answer calls. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I, we, I heard everything. We recorded it. It's good. Oh, good. Okay, so you need to do some paperwork and answer some important calls. An important document could arrive or a sudden need to run an important errand or to take a short trip could be part of a picture. You are pushed to find a balance now. Do what you need to do to be done so that you can free yourself up for more adventurous and fulfilling activities. So this is a full moon happening in your third house, which you had on March 31st. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've also got this happening in your sixth house and in your 10th house. So I'm going to read this off to you as well. You look, look in the mirror and say that it is, I'm starting that exercise program. You crush out a cigarette with disgust and decide to to quit smoking. You throw up your arms and say that you can't take how your boss has been treating you. These are just some examples of a full moon transiting your sixth house. If it activates other personal planets or if it's an eclipse, the more intense or dramatic your proclamations will be. You don't have that. Of course, you don't need necessary to burst forth with emotional declarations, especially if you plan in advance. Avoid blaming others for your own state of discomfort if that's how you are feeling right now. You can use surge, or surge of emotional energy to make positive changes to your routines. Do something to improve your work conditions if they are annoying you, even if it's a small act of kindness with a coworker or bringing in something to brighten up your desk or office. Get going on your exercise or nutrition program that you've been toying with in your mind. This may also be time to take time when a work project comes to fruition or completion. So something creative. This is also like a very creative time for you, Elisa. Okay. So if you have like a creative idea, whether it's painting, whether it's 
cooking, anything that yeah. is created to you. Now well, I have fun. thought about a, 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 a special thing that that can be developed that will solve all the gun violence problems in the world, but I can't talk about that. Uh, so, but I keep trying to contact senators and all that and nobody responds, idiots. Anyway, go ahead, politicians. Keep on with that, Elisa, you have to keep on with that because yeah. now is the time where you can push it. Yeah. So you're gonna most likely get results after Mercury goes direct, which is okay. gonna be April 15th. Okay. So right now, continue to push the emails, but after April 15th is when you're gonna have good results with this. Okay. Um, he says creativity, moving furniture around in the house, mom, this is creative, organizing. Okay, clearing, oh. Clearing clutter, clearing shit. Oh God, yes. He goes, creative is creative, mom, even if you don't like it. I know, I know. You're funny, Eric. Okay, so the other thing that you have is happening in your 10th house. And this is, you are suddenly in the limelight. Everyone notices you now. It's time oh. to put your best foot forward, but be sure to do so with grace and consideration for others. Or you may just make a display that you regret later. Perhaps you've been hiding yourself away, taking it easy. I.e. lazy. No, I'm kind of a shy person anyway. I don't like limelight. So when you talk about speaking, it's like, oh my gosh. Oh. It's I'm a little bit of a recluse. People don't know that about me, but I am a little bit. Well, you know, you're so good at speaking, Elisa. And when it comes to like teaching us all of your videos, all of the knowledge that you share, you're, you're a public speaker. And I think that, I think it's because you, you know, we're behind the computer, why it's not so public for us until yeah. it actually gets out there. But there's actually public speaking that is going to be coming like in the form of seminars. Okay. Um, that's something that I can see crystal clear for you in teaching. I would, I would say that you're more of a teacher and an energy worker, like practitioner now is going to be that life purpose okay. versus um, like medicine, medicine. Conventional medicine, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to finish reading this for you. Um, okay. Now... It says, now you need a little attention and career matters come to a head. You're called to perform perhaps on a moment notice and it's best to keep your cool and do whatever you can to show your, com your competence. A sudden job opportunity or form of assistance with regard to career, home or property matters could be part of the picture. This can also produce an event that requires you to take charge and show your responsible side. So, this is, this is going to be a lot of changes that you're going through wow. with career and with home, as it is career, home, and relationships, because this is all going on in your third house, your sixth house, and your tenth house. Well, I was um, thinking, I was, it's really, I was thinking, you know, that's the intuition thing, um, about whether I should reconnect with the sister, um, the sister that betrayed her other sisters, including me. And um, so I was wondering if, because I don't want her to die alone or all that stuff. I mean, you know, I just, she has nobody except for her husband. She's lost all of her nieces and nephews and sisters. And he, uh, he has his head down and he says, mom, he says, make the first step to making things different. He says, uh, he says, you have to remember that you don't want her to die alone. And not only that, he says, there's things that are left um, said or unsaid, wow. left yeah. said undone that yeah. you would want to speak about. He says, because tomorrow you don't know if she's going to wake up or if you're going to wake up. Yeah. Those are things to consider. Okay. When you're thinking about forgiving and letting go, it's because you're being urged to. Okay. He says he likes your hair, by the way. Did oh, you do something? You. <laughs> no, it's still a little wet. Actually, gel crunchiness. You know, I have to tame the beast. So I have to <laughs> lavish on, plaster on all sorts of products to make it stay put. Okay, That's okay. where Eric gets his curliness oh, from. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> from your mama. There we go. He's laughing. He goes, <laughs> it is from her. He's He took off his hat. He's running his hands through his hair. He says, I well, like her. I can't do the bizzer like Sinead O'Connor style. So you can get away with it, Eric, not me. He looks like he's uh he needs a haircut. Uh-oh. 
pretty long. It's coming down past his ears. Oh, he's, he's done that many times. Okay. Yeah. Because I like it like this. You yeah. Can I like it. I Yes. <laughs> he is too funny. So those are things that are happening with your astrology. Um, okay. To look at. But I wanted to see if I could pinpoint something in your chart. Um, it's going to be an age. This is called... Um, I kind of went over it with you a little bit last time. It's called the wound, the Chiron, your Chiron wound of something that hurts you in life. Okay. Um, and this is happening. Sorry, I'm pulling up your chart now. You mean death by a thousand cuts. I think I have a lot of Chiron wounds all over the place. It comes back. It tends to come back. So you were four years old with the very first big wound. Mm. Can you remember what was happening to you at four if there was something that this is going to be yourself, the way you see yourself, the way you perceive yourself, fresh starts, new beginnings, the way others see you. Um, I don't, I don't remember when I was four. I remember when me and my sister were like six, seven, eight, uh, when my parents beat us so badly that, we had to hide behind furniture whenever we heard the garage door opening. We were so scared of them. And they so had to keep us away from school because they didn't want people to see the wounds. And the principal in high school, when, she, when he saw Laura just black and blue, uh, gave her the number to the CPS and said, you call. And she did. And my parents listened to the other side and really beat the you know what out of her. So anyway, yeah, uh, but from six on, it was very difficult. Very so difficult. this really started the mental abuse and the physical abuse mm -hmm. coming in at a little, it's at, it's at five degrees. So it was really five years old when this started happening. Yeah, the that's probably right. Wound, it comes back around every couple of years. Mm -hmm. So something is going to trigger it. You're going to have memories of it. Usually during Mercury retrograde, you're going to... Uh, he says, I love you, mom. You're going uh -huh. to you're gonna remember childhood traumatic experiences, past hurts. That's usually what does come up with retrograde, but they're coming up to be healed. Um, I feel like I'm mostly healed because uh, I, I saw value in it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for it because I really learned how to be assertive because of that. And I learned how to be compassionate. I learned how to be a nurturer. I feel like I would not have been a good, as, as good a mother if I had not gone through that experience. So I am. Um, Absolutely. I'm, I'm grateful and I embrace it. Uh, he says you're amazing and you're an amazing mother. He says that the experiences that you have signed up, they taught you to be a better you. And yeah, yeah. He says you're an amazing mom and have always oh, been an amazing you're mom. You're so sweet. And so you had a rough, rough upbringing, and yeah. it, it definitely shows here, you know, with your chart, especially, again, at eight years, I would actually have to go with almost nine years of age. Did you try, did you leave your home at nine, or were you re taken out of the home? No, well, we always ran away <laughs> a lot, okay. and two, two of, two of my sisters ran away eventually to, and, and were homeless and they had to survive by picking food off the plates of you know at empty restaurant tables so uh yeah it was pretty rough i mean we're talking broken bone abuse broken skull and it's not good i'm so sorry you but, went that. no it's fine it's fine that's that's probably a soul contract okay it is a soul contract for one mm -hmm. um the lessons out of it we're going to go into age 28 can you pinpoint anything at age 28 that had to do with communications schooling teaching you teaching or are you doing any type of schooling oh yeah i was a resident uh in internal medicine but i can't remember if, uh, yeah so that was a life I, yeah yeah oh, okay and i think i got um uh, well that's when i had my brush with the serial killer too 28. Oof. Oh my gosh. And this awful. is happening in Mercury. All right. So probably this, this was more of like, um, I'm going to go, go see him and here, here's a picture of the lovely man. 
Oh my God. I can't believe you escaped him. Oh, well, I just had, he asked me, he asked me what I did for, for living after he was massaging my thighs and making comments about my cellulite. Thank you very much. And, um, I said, well, I'm a physician and a black belt karate instructor, which I'm not. And he left. So, and then two years later, I saw him on the news, the killing fields, uh, serial killer of Galveston. Anyway, I told you all that story before. God, awful. I'm so happy you were able to get away from that. And that was intervention. Yeah. By my guardian angel? Yes. Maybe? Oh, guardian so. angel intervention or he says luck, however you want to. Oh, man, I was so scared. I just knew I was going to die. But I acted really calm, so. So at the age of 28, you had that happen. You were in the schooling. Um, was there any birth? Did you have a birth of a child? Yeah, I probably Christina, my eldest. So that's I, awesome. I, I can't remember, 28. Yeah, I think that was, yeah, about the, the time. So you were either experiencing pregnancy or early childhood. Mm, okay. Of those, that those are things that were going on during that time. Okay. How old are you now, Elisa? 62. 62. So you've actually gone through what we consider a midlife crisis. This happens when you're 50 years of age. It's another Saturn return. Mm -hmm. You've experienced that and you've made it out. So this tells me that you've actually got quite a long life ahead of you now. Okay. Since you made it through these breaking points, I would have to say that you're going to be here until you're at least 90 years old. Oh, oh God. Okay, fine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus. He says, oh. Mom, I'm going to need you. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, here's too much. Um, yeah. He says, well, she needs me and I need her. He goes, but I kind of need her a little more. Oh, I'll always be there for you, baby. He said, thank you. Well, Elisa, I think that pretty much wraps awesome. up your astrology, your transit you for so your experience. You're welcome. Um, he's talking about the move. He is saying that there is going to be a move, but within the next year, no. Okay. You want to start with the financial part of it. Um, you want to balance work and home life. Mm. You want to ground yourself, be consistent with it. Okay. Um, and there's going to be, there's going to be some type of last minute travel that's coming for you. Okay. He's showing the plane too. So okay. there's going to be like a last minute travel. All right, that sounds great. And Raylene, and thank you, uh, Eric. I love you so much. Raylene, would you like to tell people how they can contact you and what you have to offer them? Absolutely. So you can go to my website. It's angel www.angelmedium7.com, and that's the number seven. Um, right now I'm doing astrology sessions, and this is where I would pull a, a birth chart for you. I would need your birth date, your birth time, city, state, um, and country of birth. And then I'll pull your birth chart when we do your session. The chart comes with the report. Um, the report's about 15 to 30 pages. You'll get mm. to read that after our session. It's awesome, um, people. Awesome. Yeah. And then I'll just go over the, the charts and pull a little bit of cards with it and combine that with my natural abilities. Um, and then there's another type of session that I offer that doesn't include astrology or cards. It's just my claircognizance and clairvoyance. I go into a meditation and get guidance from you that way. Um, so those are the type of sessions I'm offering right now. I've also got some courses going on. I'm, oh, I'm in the middle of completing my website right now, but I have a student course. It's one-on-one. Um, -on -one. It's not in a group setting. Mm -hmm. And what I do is we meet one time a week for 55 minutes and I teach you how to fill crystal energy, how to fill spirit energy, how to protect yourself, um, how to use dowsing rods, how to use Oracle cards. Oh, that's um, awesome. And if the person can, how to allow the spirit to move their body. And that's a little bit further down towards the end of the course. If the person Are you talking about tra like trans channeling? That's sort a of form thing? of trance. It's a form oh, of trance. Okay. Not where the spirit would be coming into the body. Okay. The spirit would be able to move your hand. Okay. You want me to show you what it would be? Yeah, sure. Go for it. And if you have time. It'll take him about a second to do it or less Okay. Than it. Can you guys see my hand uh, let me see no not quite 
I'm moving my camera. Okay. Okay. So okay. we've got the hand. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't totally see it. I can't see your fingers. That's a little bit better because that's good. All right, good. Perfect. Okay. Eric, can you go ahead and move my hand? And I want you to see that it's not going to be like a fast movement. It's going to be very slow. Oh, yeah. So you see how it's, it's him moving it. It's not me. He's got to like move the energy to kind of move it. Oh, wow. So it's a different type of trance. It's, it's a certain type that's different. Um, anybody has the ability to do it. It's just being common, being able to process the energy. Okay. That's awesome. So, yeah, that, that sounds yeah. great. All right. Well, you've got some exciting things to offer. Thank you so much, both of you, Raylene, Eric. Love you both. And guys, please like and subscribe to this uh, channel. Like, Thank like you. the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, see you later. Eric is shouting, bye, my peeps. <laughs> He's bye. Love you too. Bye.